grapes. Have you noticed that grapes today are as big as walnuts? Huh? I mean, I remember when grapes were little things. Today you buy grapes and they're as big as walnuts. Uh, you buy cherries and they're as big as plums used to be. And the plums today are as big as peaches. Have you noticed that? I mean, I think that happened one day while I went to sleep. And when I woke up, it was, there they were. Everything was, was bigger. Go to 1 Kings, or 2 Kings. You can go to 1 Kings if you want, but the scripture's in 2 Kings. Chapter 5, verse 1. Now Naaman was captain of the host for the king of Syria. He was a great man with his master. He was honorable, and because of him, the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. Wow! He is the military leader, a great man to the king of Syria. God has blessed him. He was also a mighty man of valor. Wow! He was also a mighty man of valor. Beautiful story. And then comes the, the word but. But he was a leper. Wow. Ooh, what a kick in the stomach. Uh, great man. Wonderful man. Wonderful enough man that God has blessed his Ministry of military defense. God's blessed him. God's blessed him, but still he has leprosy. Leprosy will kill him in the most difficult way. I mean, he will literally rot to death. One piece at a time will fall away, and he will eventually die. So he is a mighty man of valor, a man who God has blessed what he does. The king whom he works for really loves him and thinks highly of him. He's not just somebody appointed to do a job, but he's a man that the king respects greatly. All is good, but he is a leper. Uh, had a chance this morning to hit an antelope on the way over. Uh, no, I didn't take the chance. Uh, I didn't. I didn't take him up on it. Uh, I offered him another option. Uh, when when you're driving down the road, uh, uh, bless God, bless my boy, the the boy from my real Indian Ben, from India. Uh, Drove me back and forth to the jail a lot. Uh, bless Ben. He really cared. He loved to drive me back and forth, but I really preferred to ride with Josh. Uh, because Josh would come home from the jail at 60 mile an hour. But Ben was raised in Minnesota on a sheet of ice, he said. And he could handle the car at 78 mile an hour any time of the day or night. And I would just, I mean, eventually you get tired of saying, please slow this thing down. I know I'm old, but I can still drive if I have to. <laughs> uh, so I would let him drive rapidly, and I would always be scared to death. That He got three or four deer while he was here. And I didn't want him to get one with me. I, I, you know, get it with your own car, not mine, please. You know, but Ben really likes moving. I mean, he likes moving down the highway. I don't want to go to Minnesota. You people that are visiting from Minnesota, yeah, they must drive wild there on sheets of ice. I mean, it must be awful. As bad as County Niners here. I mean, so uh, when I see an animal down the road. I try to figure out what kind of an animal it is because it's going to make a difference in how I approach it. Huh? Well, I mean, obviously, obviously if it's a squirrel, <laughs> I don't get too alarmed, okay? 
No, I don't mean that. I mean big animals. If I'm looking way down the road and I can see an animal there and it's an adult cow, if it's an adult cow, the adult cow will probably continue to do what it's doing. I mean, if it's just ambling alongside of the road, you don't need to slow down to three mile an hour. It's going to stay right there and keep eating grass. That's what it's going to do. Don't get alarmed. I'm giving this as information for newbies. Anybody that's new here. You kids that are getting ready to get your driver's permits. Yes. Uh, if it's a calf, if it's a three-month-old calf, you better get out and lead your car. Huh? Because it'll do anything absolutely without any ability for you to predict what it's going to do. It's, it'll do anything. Uh, you know, do not count on, on having a prediction. I love it when I look up there and it's an antelope. Because, and, and it was exactly what happened this morning, an antelope. There was one on each side of the road. And as we came along, I mentioned to Patrick, hey, antelope here. And, and in my mind, I have learned that antelope do not necessarily have to commit suicide. Antelope are comfortable with turning around and going the other way. Even though their friend has already crossed the road, they'll turn and go back. Now, deer, deer tend to say, well, my buddy's already crossed the road. And I know it doesn't look like I've got enough time, but I'm really quick. So I'm much more cautious if it's deer up there than I am if it's an antelope. Now, you go to Alaska and you get into moose. You write it down. That moose is going to continue going the exact direction he's going, and he doesn't care who you are or who you think you are. He is going there. I rode the Alaskan Railroad years ago. They told me that during the wintertime, they will get snow banks 12 feet high beside the train where they have to plow the track. And a moose will get on the track, and they'll have to go really slow. And that moose will, I mean, they'll, they'll be just, doing trot speed ahead of a moose, behind the moose. And the moose will just trot down the track ahead of them. Somewhere he got onto the track. They're just following him real slow. It says it takes hours and hours and hours to run that train during the winter just because of the moose that get on the track. But he said, generally speaking, that moose will only go so far and he will turn and charge the train. He will turn and charge the train. And then he says, we load the dead moose up and haul them, haul them back down to Anchorage, and, and they will process the meat down there. Because he said, uh, a, a moose, when they do that, they will not turn back. They will, they will just charge on because they've made up their mind that's who they are and that's their property and they're, that's where they're going to go. Paul said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Uh, how can that be? I mean, becoming a Christian was not that difficult. I mean, I didn't have to take classes. I didn't have to go through initiation. I didn't have to go to practice every week. But you tell me, if I am in Jesus Christ, if I've accepted Jesus Christ, I am a new creation. Without working at it, without, without barbells, I am a new creation. How can this be? Because he has changed my heart. He has changed my heart. He has changed who I am. The guy I talked to you about a couple of weeks ago, you know, remember I told him it's, it's like a light got turned on in a dark room. Everything is different. Everything is different. Now that that light has been switched on, everything has different. You see, when you wonder how that can be, Paul says, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You have become God's temple. When you accept Jesus Christ, and Christ comes into your life, you are a new creation because God is dwelling in you. The Holy Spirit is dwelling in you. And he is going to change you. Uh, 
immediately, completely, right now, everything? No, not necessarily. Sometimes, yes, completely. I mean, you talk to people who are addicted. Some of them will say, I, I, not, not near as many, but every now and then you run into somebody that says, I mean, I was delivered immediately from my habit. That was the end of it. I never wanted it again. Ooh, praise God. But then you talk to some who say, I struggled for a long time. I struggled for a long time before I finally got the victory. That's how Red Tolman came to the Lord. <laughs> Red Coleman came to the Lord. Red's testimony was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful testimony of how God changed him and how how he took away. Or, you know, didn't happen the first hour, right? No. But it happened over time. But God changed him. God changed him, and he became that new person that God would have him to be. So, if you are walking with God, then he is walking in you. If you're really walking with God, he is walking in you. And if he is in you, you are changing. You are being changed. You are changing. Naaman had a slave girl. A slave girl from Israel. She said, oh, how I wish my master could go and be with the prophet in Israel, the prophet Elisha. He could heal him. Naaman immediately spoke to the king, and they began making preparations for him to go and to be there. And so they made the trip. When they actually finally, first they went to the king, but when they finally got to Elisha, when they finally got to Elisha, he's coming in a huge entourage. He's got all kinds of people and servants and everything with him. And they, they arrive at the tent of Elisha. And Elisha does not come out and say, Honorable Naaman, what a pleasure to meet you. He doesn't do that. He sends his servant out. What's the problem? And they say, well, our master, Naaman, has uh, leprosy. He trots back in and tells Elisha what the problem is. Elisha sends a servant back out, and he looks at Naaman, and he says, go dip in the Jordan River seven times, okay? And he went back into the tent. And Naaman was furious. Naaman was furious. Furious. Read it in any, any one of the uh, translations you want to read it in. Naaman was furious. Naaman was a mighty man. Naaman was a bull moose. I came here with a plan. I came here with a purpose, and I'll get it. <laughs> yeah, right. He had his mind set. This is the way it's going to be done. This is the way it's going to happen. He sent a puny Serving out to me, who's he think I am? It says he went away in a rage. He went away in a rage. If the Holy Spirit is working within you, he is producing fruit. He's producing fruit. Your life, if you are walking with God, your life is producing spiritual fruit. Galatians 5.22. Galatians 5.22. He is producing spiritual fruit in you if you, in fact, are allowing the Holy Spirit to work in your life as he wants to. Galatians 5.16 says, So let the Holy Spirit guide your life. Let the You notice that as a voluntary action. Let the Holy Spirit guide your life. Verse 22, the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, 
goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Okay, let's go through that list again. Score yourself. <laughs> Give yourself a score, 1 to 10. Huh? Score yourself. He produces love. Uh, this isn't you and your girlfriend. You will love people you don't even know. He's talking about a real love. You will love and have compassion for people you've never met. You will have a love for people. You will love them. You won't even know their needs yet, but you will love them. You know that you love them, and you know that if there's somebody up there, you are going to do whatever you can do to help them because you love people. That's the kind of love. Give yourself a score, 1 through 10. Joy. That's not happy birthday kind of stuff. That's not, you know, that's not just because you're having your birthday today, Tom. Uh, that's not just bubbling happy birthday. No, when he says joy, he's taught. Yeah, I like, I, I mean, you can put water on and you get little bubbles when it boils, just little. But if you put chili on, I like those bubbles. You go boom, 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 you know. That's the kind of joy we're talking about. Deep down bubbling up joy. One to ten. Deep down bubbling up joy. My life is filled with joy deep down not little happy frivolous but deep down bubbling joy is what you're talking about peace peace i am at peace with the world yeah there's a lot wrong out there there's a lot wrong out there there's a lot that needs to be changed there's a lot of things going on in my life but i have peace i have peace real peace one to ten i have peace i am i am at peace patience There are no minuses allowed here. <laughs> no minus scores allowed. Patience. You know what patience is? I mean, yes, patience. God says that's a fruit of the Spirit. Patience. Kindness. 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 You are kind at heart. You are looking for ways to be kind Goodness, goodness. You are looking for ways to demonstrate the goodness of God in your life. Faithfulness, faithfulness. How faithful are you in all things? How are you doing on your score? Faithfulness, faithfulness, faithfulness. Gentleness, gentleness. Uh, Gentleness, you can fire an employee and end it up with a hug. Huh? I mean, that's gentleness. You can say, I'm sorry, we've got to terminate this, but I love you. I love you. Uh, gentleness. And finally, self-control. Man, I'd like to have given him a piece of my mind. Man, I would have liked to have given him a piece of my mind. If I'd have had a few more pieces to spare, I might have. <laughs> But I don't have many pieces to spare. But you didn't give him a piece of your mind. You controlled yourself. I hope you've got a good score. <laughs> I certainly hope you have an over halfway score. I hope your score is in the top 75 percentile of the possibility. Because God wants it to be there. God wants your score to be high. Uh, and somebody inevitably says, you know, I just wasn't born that way. You know? Uh, the Holy Spirit didn't give me that gift. Well, then you read the verse wrong. This is not talking about the gifts of the Spirit. This is talking about the fruit of the Spirit. They are two different things. The gifts of the Spirit are gifts that are given individually and differently to each of us. But the fruit of the Spirit is to be growing on all of us. As we allow Christ to work in us, we are growing. But the pro some of us are like the bull moose. I'm already set in the way I'm going. I've already made up my mind how I'm going to treat this situation. 
I'm not turning around now. Got it? Ian's practicing at being a ventriloquist. He's talking without moving his lips. <laughs> He's doing an amazing job for a four-year-old. With something like that. How in the world are you doing that? And he's doing his ABCs without moving his lips. And boy, he's got his lips. It, he's really doing good. He'll be up here someday. But I've got my way decided. I'm going that way. This is how I'm going to do it. You're not going to change me. I don't have that gift. Well, fruit is the result of a submitted life. The fruit of the Spirit is the result of a submitted life. The point where you say, Lord, I will, I will, I will submit to you. I will allow you to work in my heart. So most of us are born with a fairly strong will, uh, pretty much like the moose, pretty much like it. But bless you if you're like an antelope, <laughs> easily turned around, you know. If that's natural to you, praise God. You are blessed. If that's a natural response to you, uh, Naaman left in a rage. Naaman left in a rage. He had a wise servant who kept his mouth shut for a while. Didn't jump in right away. But eventually, as Naaman kind of cooled off a little bit, the wise servant said to him, Sir, this puzzles me. What's puzzling you? Well, if the, if the prophet would have asked you to do some difficult, hard thing, you probably would have done it. Why won't you do something so simple as go wash? Huh? Why aren't you willing to do something so simple as just go wash? Naaman turned around and went to the river. He dipped once. He dipped twice. Nothing happened until he dipped all seven times and his flesh came back to him clean. Developing the fruits of the Spirit is typically more than one dip in the river. <laughs> you are typically going to find yourselves dipping in the river repeatedly, the river of submission. The river called submission. Oh, Lord, I want my life to honor you. Lord, I want my life to bring forth blessing to other people. Father, I know I don't have patience. Lord, I know I'm not very gentle. Lord, change me. Change me. Miss Teresa, will you come up and sing and play 654? Let's turn to 654 in our hymnals. I've already got it, man. I mean, I already, I'm there, man. I'm ready. Let's stand together. This is a beautiful song. This is a beautiful song. Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. May I be like you. You are the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me. This is what I pray. Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. 
change my heart, O oh God. May I be like you. You are the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me. This is what I pray. Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. May I be like you. Notice up there under the title uh, song, when this, when the inspiration of Naaman came to me the other day in this song, I thought I wondered what verse they used to build that song upon, you know. So I grabbed the hymnal and created me a pure heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me, Psalms 51.10. Create in me a pure heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. God wants giant fruit. He wants grapes as big as pineapples of holiness in our life. And that only happens as we dip in the river of submission. <laughs> as we dip again and again in the river of submission, oh God, wash me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Jesus is getting ready to wash the disciples' feet, and he comes to Peter, and Peter says, Hold it, buddy. <laughs> Not me. Not me. I ought to be washing your feet. You aren't washing my feet. And Jesus said, If I don't wash your feet, you're not mine. And Peter says, Then wash all of me. <laughs> not just my feet, but wash me completely. Wow. <laughs> oh, Lord. Created me a beautiful heart. Make the fruit gigantic, God. May I be like you. Heavenly Father, oh Lord, you are the potter. God, I really want to be clay. I don't want to be a bull moose who says, I'm going to do it my way. I want to be willing, Lord, again and again and again to dip in the river of submission that you might be able to create that new heart in me. Jesus, may our people be abundant in the fruit of the Spirit. May the people who interact with us see that fruit. May they know how you are working in our lives because they can see it hanging on the branches of the life we live. Oh, Holy Spirit, have your way in our hearts. May we be like you. In Jesus' name, amen.